Lesson one, you're not allowed to clap in parliament. <laughs> here, here, bang the desk, okay? Technically, it's actually out of standing orders. It's observed a little bit more in the breach nowadays than it was when I first came in 15 years ago. If you'd clapped, you'd have probably been chucked out. Actually, I was chucked out once for clapping. But anyway, um, that was up in the Federation Chamber and I probably did deserve it. Um, I wasn't actually thrown out, but the Speaker at the time decided I probably shouldn't be there any longer. But anyway, welcome to Parliament. Congratulations to those of you who have earned the right to sit on those big green seats. I'd also like to pay my respects to the elders of the area, the narrow, the narrow, ah, I haven't got it in front of me and I've gone, Ngunnawal and Nambri peoples, I used to know that off by heart, isn't that terrible? The traditional owners of the land and pay my respects to their elders past and present. I think it's really important that we remember where we sit and the great country that we belong to and the wonderful heritage that we get to celebrate. Sometimes I think we forget all that in the hurly-burl of who we are and where we've got to. But you should actually feel about that. You're a very select group of Australians. Only 1,133 people have been elected to the House of Representatives since Federation. Think about that, 1,133. It's going to be a little controversial, of course. A lot less of that group were females. So if you're female elected, feel even doubly proud about the achievement you've made because if you look at the stats, it's quite remarkable. And of course, someone like Mel Bruff sort of throws the stats out because he's been in and out and in and out. So welcome back, just the ones. <laughs> Some others, it's, um, is it uh, Russell Broadbent? Twice, yeah. So yeah, so people do it and that person will only be counted once. So think about it. So very few people have actually achieved this honour. So wear that with pride. Think about it. So one of the other things is that each parliament is unique. Um, Mel, I, others will tell you, you and that you know that uh, each parliament has its own sort of rhythm and rhyme. So I can't really get you prepared for what's happening. Um, I can advise that opposition and government are a little different, having done both, um, and going back to opposition. But each is a little different, the rhyme, the rhythm, even the sitting hours. When I first got elected, we had this sitting pattern, which was ghastly. Um, our last sitting pattern was bad, but the first sitting pattern I had up here was torturous. I probably compounded the situation by having my first child 12 months later. But, you know, uh, you, you go in, in for a penny, in for a pound, as they say. But we sat these hours, which were just so exhausting, that we were wrecked. And there was a fantastic member of the parliament who retired at the last election, Mel Bruff, who's a WA Lib. Mel Washer, I'm having a bad day today. Mel Washer. Um, no, don't. No, you've just come back. You've just come back. So Mel Washer is a doctor from WA and actually argued the case about the need for better hours for our, our actual health, the members of parliament. And I tell you that story because one of the things you need to look after, first and foremost, is yourself. Because you are irreplaceable in that way. And you forget yourself. We, we sacrifice a lot to be here. We're not conscripts. We're volunteers. You know, I loathe people, oh, it's so hard in the family, it's this and the other. You killed yourself in pre-selection and then you killed yourself to get elected. You want to be here. You want to be here. So enjoy it. Commit to it. But remember to look after yourself because a lot of people don't. That's the one thing you really do sacrifice a lot of in this place is yourself. You don't make the time for yourself. You might make the time for your, your partner, your kids, your extended family, the community. You need to remember yourself. It's a big lesson that a lot of people forget. A lot of the comments I got as speaker was about my hair. I got all these comments about my hair. It used to drive me nuts. It's a big argument that I was channeling Justin Bieber. Why I'd be channeling the Beeb is beyond me. Even my kids don't like the Beeb. But I hadn't had time to get a haircut. Sue me. Um, but there was this outrage out there about my hair. No joke. This went on for weeks. Twitter feed, all the rest of it, because I, honest to God, hadn't found time for a haircut. The, the, the moral of the story is just remember yourself 
in this process. You know, you need to keep on top of what you need to do to keep yourself in a really good place. So each parliament is different, and of course, with a majority parliament again, it'll be very different from a hung parliament. It'll be very different in the rancor, the vibe in the chamber. It'll be very different to the needs of members being here all the time. You still need to be here. Do not underestimate that. You want to miss a division? Go and introduce yourself to the whip now. Okay? I seriously recommend against it. But it won't be the need to be here, so there could be a bit of latitude that there obviously was not in the previous parliament. So the rhyme and the rhythm will be very different to what you've seen in the last parliament because it is a majority again. And of course, out of that, the parliament did get a very bad reputation. The parliament did come into disrepute, and I've spoken about a great deal about that. And I think it was a shame because this is a magnificent institution. What I was deeply depressed about is the, the notion that the parliament had failed. Leave aside politics, leave aside uh, parties, leave aside government opposition. The parliament did not fail. This is a magnificent institution. It is above, in lots of respects, the politics of the day. It will continue to work, and it did as a hung parliament. Legislation was still passed. Committees still met. People came together and did things. And in some respects, because of the hung parliament, it actually forced people to come together and do a, a huge range of things. Philip Ruddick and I can talk a great deal about sitting through selection committee together, which was a unique affair in the last parliament. We actually came together and worked that through. So the parliament worked. So I, I really personally, as speaker, was quite, um, you know, quite despondent about this notion about the parliament and people denigrating this institution. I've had the opportunity to travel around the world and witness other parliaments. We have lots of delegations from other parliaments come here and they marvel at not just the building but the processes and the procedures that we have adopted in this place. And indeed, many countries have mirrored what we do here because we do it so well. And actually, the last parliament made a lot of advances for individual members of parliament. And you need to be looking for those. You need to be thinking of yourself, OK, as the majority of you as members of the government or the opposition, the members of the parliament, but you're also here as an individual member of parliament. You're here representing your community. What advantages can you have in that? In the last parliament, there was actually a lot of opportunities for individual members to actually have speaking roles, to be involved in discussions, to bring forward private members' bills. Private members' bills were passed into law. Can I tell you, that doesn't happen. That really doesn't happen in majority parliament. So there were opportunities, and I'm hoping some of those reforms will carry through, because some of them were actually quite good for the individual member, for the member to make their mark both for themselves in their career but for the communities that they represent. One of the other things that you'll see during the next two days that most people don't know about is we run two chambers. The House has two operating chambers. We have the House and the Federation Chamber. It's a smaller chamber and it is a great opportunity, particularly for new members, to get up there, get on their feet and be heard because it's not this big intimidating room. One of the first things you have to learn in Parliament is how to give a speech to nobody. I tell you, it takes a lot of time because we're all used to speaking in public. But you know, you engage with the audience, you talk, you get a laugh, you get the eyes. It's really weird giving a speech to nobody, but Hansard. And Hansard aren't even there nowadays; they're recording it somewhere else. It's quite a weird experience. It really takes a while to get used to, you know, knowing that there's. You think, oh, there's no one listening. But they are. They're out there on News 24, on the radio. You will be stunned by the emails you will get from people saying, I heard you speaking. I was a new member. I was giving a speech at 2 a.m. in the morning on banking regulations. Fascinating stuff. It's a great speech. The whip had rung and said, we need someone down there now. I was like half asleep, drool coming down the face. I really don't. Get down there. Down there. Give my speech. Oh, this man. Send me a text. I heard your speech. I felt like, get a life. Um, I didn't. You know, 
I think a staff member got to me before I could hit the send button. But people are listening. So do not under underestimate what you are saying and who is hearing it at the time. But the importance of giving it a lot of the time is not for them. It's for the Hansard. It's for the record. So the Federation Chamber gives you that opportunity to learn the art of being here, giving a speech. There's opportunities to do that. It's the non-controversial chamber. So there won't be somebody heckling you. You know, do not be surprised. Even down here, a non-controversial speech, someone might try, you know, try to rev you up, trying to give you the raz. It's part of the process. Tragically, get used to it. Technically, six, uh, Standing Order 65B prohibits that, but you know that's observed more in the breach than the reality. That's the standing order that says nobody should speak when somebody, nobody sh else, should be speaking when someone is on their feet. Of course, to get the call, you need to actually stand up and be on your feet. That is why the terminology is on their feet. If you sit down, the only time, of course, that was uh, ever changed was for the one time we had a member of parliament who was in a wheelchair. But otherwise, you need to be on your feet to be heard. Technically, men must be in their jackets and ties. It's not actually in the standing orders, but it's become legendary. So I really recommend not thinking you can get away with uh, out of jacket and tie. And I did get a whole lot of cross emails from a speaker once when I turned up in a T-shirt. It's a really nice T-shirt, cost me a lot, but apparently it wasn't business attire. So think about it. Those are the, the really weird and wonderful things you don't ever think about. So the Federation Chamber should become your second home. Really utilise it. Make sure you're making use of the opportunities that Parliament presents. Can I tell you, especially those of you from regional areas, you don't speak anything, you, you never get up and do a speech in this chamber, your local paper will be onto it. We've elected so and so to Parliament, they've only made one speech, your first one, and then we haven't heard from them. There's opportunities to speak. There's a thing called a 90 second statement which happens down in the chamber before question time. It's a great opportunity. Be down here, you get one and a half minutes. You know, it's the I love you all. You know, the local community group held its 100th birthday this weekend. I was there and so-and-so was present. La, 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 bit of hand side, send it off. You've also ticked off, I've made a speech. Little things you need to think about and get into your mind about the rhythm and the rhyme of your life when you're in parliament. How to utilise it for yourself what are the benefits? What are the opportunities? Most of this will be covered in the next few days. But never forget you're a parliamentarian. First and foremost, that's what you've been elected to be. And you don't get away from that. I was at the beach at uh, Marimbula, you know, New South Wales. I'm from Victoria. In the beach, in the bathers. You never want to be spotted in your bathers as a girl. Um, oh, it's Anna Burke, our local member. I was like, oh, God. Um, you are always a parliamentarian. You are always a parliamentarian and never forget it. So there's also great opportunities behind the scenes. We don't talk a lot about this, but we'll hear a lot more about parliamentary committees and the opportunities they provide. Fantastic work goes on in this parliament in a bipartisan manner on the committees. Great work, great opportunities terrific ability to carve out niches that you are passionate about. Don't forget also embracing your passions and your things that you want to have a voice. You know, why you got elected to parliament? What are the issues you want to pursue? Committee work can do that for you. So don't underestimate it, but also don't overload yourself, particularly new members, particularly those in marginal seats. I probably shouldn't say that to liberals, but you know, you need to also think about how much work you take on because there's nothing worse than saying you're going onto a committee and never turning up. Your colleagues are going to hate you. So there will be requirements, but there's great opportunities. And you get to meet and make friendships across the chamber. You get to meet and have opportunities to share ideas. At the end of the day, we all came here for the one reason, to represent our areas and, you know, as corny as it sounds, to make the world a better place. Now, all of us, when you get, narrow it down to what you want to do and how you want to do it, and the committees offer you a great opportunity to do that. You know, and there's been some, you know, as I say, some surprising long-term friendships that have come out of these, these endearing committee meetings. Um, 
you listen to some people's farewells, they, they, they were nicer about the opposition than they were about their mates from, uh, you know, the, uh, from their colleagues in government or, or vice versa, because they'd worked so long with them on committees and uh, you know, they'd struck up some friendships, particularly if they were passionate about an issue that they were working together to see something through. So there's some great opportunities there. And again, opportunities you can use back in your electorate. You know, this is an issue that is of concern to my neck of the woods. That is why I'm going to pursue it on this committee and this is what I'm going to do. So there are some great opportunities there. As I said before, you'll be surprised how many people are out there watching on TV. Just remember that. So when you're sitting here in question time on your iPad, playing solitaire, buying shoes, sending a note to someone, can I tell you, the people in the gallery can actually see. Wave to the little kids up there. Hey. Uh, yeah, see, there's always someone in here, trust me. Uh, they will see, they will send the speaker a note. I was appalled today. I sat through question time. This woman, was, oh, this is no joke, this is the one I had. This woman was buying shoes. It would have been all right if they were good shoes. You know, so it's there, it's, it's out there. Think about it. Think about the decorum of the place. You're always a politician, you're always on show. I know that's hard, but you're always here. So it's not always helped the reputation of members in this place. You know, some people have let them sigh themselves and their party down by some of the things they think, oh, well, that's, you know, it was me and I was being an individual. You're not. You are now always a member of parliament. So it reflects on everybody. So as a speaker, I received, uh, as I said, a lot of correspondence about my hair, about my outfit, but the most I received was about the behaviour of members in the chamber. Can I tell you, for some people, that's all right, you know, the pride of being there and being chucked out every other day and all the rest of it, but it's not. You know, there's, uh, you know, the, you, particularly if you're, again, in sort of smaller areas where the local rag carries a bit of weight, front page, so-and-so thrown out of the chamber again. You know, people don't like it. The public don't like it. Again, you are bringing this institution into disrepute. I've been thrown out of the chamber twice. Both times I earned it, both times, you know, it was a matter of principle that I was standing up to. Um, but, you know, that was two in 15 years. But, you know, it's the rough and tumble. You want to be part of that. And I'm not saying you won't be, but just think about how it looks, how you're presenting yourself, your party to the world who are watching. So this is a, it's not just something I've, that happened in the last parliament. Every other speaker will tell you the same thing from time and memoriam. So we need to keep this in mind that the community is out there and they expect higher standards and they have been really disappointed. And it's about the dignity and the manner we treat each other and, and human beings. And that's what people kept saying. Why don't you just treat each other nice? I mean, occasionally I would say, can't we all just play nice? You know, and it really, that, that's what the public was sensing. This should be about the decision making of where the government of the day is taking and where the opposition is holding them to account. Sometimes it's funny. Well, I've had some hysterical moments in this place. I won't recount them because most of them are very partisan. Um, but, you know, it, that's fun and it can be fun and then everyone can get into the, into the uproar of it. But think about the overall look of it. That absolute rancour doesn't wash well with the community and it reflects very poorly on this magnificent institution. During the couple of days we're going to go into balancing life in Canberra and the electorate. This can be difficult. I won't cover that off, but you need to think about it. You need to think about it now. You need to start planning your life now about how you're going to do that balance. What time you're going to make for yourself? When are you going to have constituents in? How many events on a weekend do you want to go to? Am I taking January off? Am I taking July off? When the sitting pattern comes out, when am I going to fly up? When am I going to go home? You've got to really actually think about it and plan it all out. I joke you not. You've also got to plan out things like getting to the dentist and getting to the hairdresser um, because, you know, they also get thrown up and out and done and you think, oh, I'll just put it off, I'll put it off, and you do, and it never happens. And suddenly you're up in Parliament with a raging hole in a tooth and the whip says, no, it's happened to somebody, no, I'm sorry, you're just going to have to sit there in agonising pain because we can't let you go. Christopher Pine was in the middle of a haircut, because there is a little hairdresser down here, 
the middle of a haircut one day and we had a division. It was a good look. So I said, what's going on? I said, I've just come from the hairdresser. Get this over with so I could go back. You know, <laughs> you forget about that. It is difficult. There are challenges for your family, the length of time you're going to be away from home. Even if you've travelled a lot in other um, you know, walks of life. I travelled a lot before I came into this place. Mind you, then I didn't have kids, so it was a bit of a different experience. But you are away a lot. And then you're away a lot when you're at home. That's what you forget. People sort of think, oh, I love it. Oh, you're not working at the moment. Um, <laughs> we're always working. That's the thing. We're never not working. It's just we're not sitting in Parliament. So what my kids hate the most is I've been gone. That's OK. So when I come home, I'll get home Thursday and I've got a function Thursday night. And they get really cranky. I mean, gone. What do you mean you're going? Well, you know, it's, it's the AGM and that's the one I go to and it's Friday. It's Thursday night. I'm going to be gone, guys. So you've got to work all that out. You've got to work out what's important to do. I missed a leadership challenge to go to my daughter's first day at school was probably not a great you know, thing for my career. Everybody keeps saying, oh, you know, you can't do this, you can't do this. It's Maddie's first day at school. I'm not missing my child's first day at school. Oh, you've got to come, you've got to come. You can't have a ballot, you can't, you can't have a poster vote, you're going to miss it. I don't care. I'm going to my child's first day at school. Oh, but she won't remember. Well, she mightn't, but I will. I'll remember I missed that remarkable moment. And like it was a moment, I handed her over and she was gone. She just went, see her. <laughs> Off she went. She'd spent that much time away from me. It wasn't a big deal, tragically. But, you know, I wanted to be there for that. So you've got to work that out. You've got to make those decisions. And sometimes they are brave decisions, but you've got to balance that now. It's hard. Everybody leaves this place saying, I didn't spend enough time with my families. That's true. I go back to, though, you're not conscripts, you're volunteers. But balance it now. Make those markers with your community and your staff and yourself now. And then you have the rhythm and you're not as overwhelmed by it all. Bring your family to Canberra as much as you can also. Under the entitlements, I'll get on to entitlements, they're fun things. Um, you can bring your family up here. Do. If there's opportunities for them to come, your spouse to come, your kids to come, your extended family. This is a magnificent place. They get to come behind the scenes. They get to see you in action. You know, they mightn't see you much because you're busy, but they're here. So it's a really good opportunity. Don't miss that. My kids have seen more of Canberra than I have. I've never been to Questacon. I think they've been about 30 times. You know, there's some great things here also. I loathe people. Been all over the world, seen every capital but their own. I encourage people to come to Canberra. Encourage constituents to come to Canberra. Show them around the office. Show them around this great building. Really utilise the building also as part of your campaigning, um, as part of your process of being a member of parliament. It's really good to do that. Also connect with other colleagues, families and friends. I had a mate who committed suicide who was a member here. And one of the things is he'd lost contact with people. I'm not going into it, but you know, it can take a, a toll on your existence. So just remember that. Keep connected. Spousals, the spousals um, association is a great thing to join, be part of, come up, get involved if you want to. It's another opportunity. Actually understand what's going on in the place. Be part of your partner's life. It's not entirely political up here. It's a bit of social, a bit of fun, but it's also, it's, 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 you know, as I said, 1,133 people have had the opportunity to do this. So not many people get what we do. I remember getting elected the first time, which was sort of a bit of a miracle. I didn't think I was going to knock off Michael Woolridge. I was lucky he swapped seats and I didn't have to. Um, so I got elected sort of, I didn't expect to win. I rang a mate and said, what does a member of parliament do? Because no, you really don't know. And a lot of it is what you decide to do yourself. So get people and know people and embrace that and have family and friends understand that you've, you're not on holidays half the year because you're not in parliament. It's my mother's forever wanting to ring the radio. Please don't ring the radio, Mum. She shows Anna's mother here. It was great. You know, they're saying they don't work. They just, you know, she's always working. You know, but have people understand that. Also remember not to lose your friends. The ones outside Parliament. Hopefully you've got some. I tell you, lots of people who've been here a long time don't. Have some other people in your life. You can go to. Have some other people. Get out of your office. 
I reckon you could die in your office in this building and nobody would know. Because it is so solitary. They are so big. And you can can and out. I live out of my office. My gym gear's in there. I have breakfast in there. I have lunch. I have dinner. Of course, my office is a little larger than everybody else's. I'm going to not cope going back to the small. And even they're huge. But get out of the office. Go to Aussies. Go to the gym. Walk around the building. Head to the library. Don't spend your life in there. Make sure you catch up with people and do that during the hours here. Because sometimes it will get to 11 o'clock at night. You think, oh, I haven't eaten. I went to this committee meeting. I had to go to question time as a division. Uh, just do it. Otherwise, by about Thursday night, you'll all be in chairman's lounge going, where's the wine? Um, you're too tired to drink it. Hopefully, you've all signed up to chairman's lounge. You are allowed to do it. My other advice is declare it on your member's interest. That's the whole other issue of entitlements. Of course, there's been a lot of adverse media about entitlements. There always will be. We're never going to get away from that. You know, police perks, doing this, doing that. The easiest thing is declare everything. And if it doesn't pass the front of the Herald Sun, the Daily Telegraph or the Courier Mail test, don't claim it. Pretty simple. And if you're confused, there's people to ring and ask. I don't know why we've been going on about, oh, we need another system. There's already a system there. There's always a group of people there. Sometimes it is ambiguous. The easiest thing is to ask. And the other thing is doing this job can cost you money. I'm sure all new candidates are feeling that because you probably didn't get it paid for a while before, you know, during the election and then waiting for the pay to come. People say, oh, yes, yeah, great money. Well, yeah, and the locals, you know, five local schools have just asked me a donation for the fate. Some other kid's doing a marathon in Cambodia. Somebody else is going to a frisbee tournament. That one's doing my head in the frisbee tournament representing Australia. You know, they all ask. So there's a lot of demands on you about money and time and entitlements. And you pay up here, like you'll be paying, you'll pay in advance and then you get paid in arrears. So don't worry about, oh, I shouldn't do it. You know, if, if it's genuine, you've incurred the cost for your work-related purposes, claim it. If it's going to a wedding, I'll be very controversial, don't. It's not work, regardless of what anybody says. And again, it's not going to pass the ultimate test, the community, regardless of whether you can justify it to people here or the federal police at the end of the day. When the scandals happened in the UK, seven members of parliament went to jail. It's a sobering thought. So again, this brings people into disrepute. But you're entitled to claim for your benefits and do so. Um, there's issues around a whole lot of stuff with salaries, fringe benefits, your uh, expensive office allowment, all the rest of it. Just get a grip on it now. Set up a system in your office now that is controlled by somebody else and checked off. You can do it, but just make sure there's somebody else checking. You get a monthly statement, you get a quarterly statement. Just check it, because you can make mistakes. I've had to repay money. I forgot I'd taken my kids into state twice in a year. Now, I mean, that sounds stupid, but when you travel as much as we do, and last two years have been a bit torturous and busy for me, so I just forgot. So I repaid the money. It'll happen. And that's out there. It's declarable. It's on the statement. I'm not stating anything that's not you know, already public knowledge. This is all public knowledge as well. They don't have to FOI it. You can actually now go to a computer and look at it. Understand how they work, what's claimable and what you can do. So if an error has been made, immediately rectify it. Get on top of your members' interest and do things. I've covered a lot. There's a lot more to be covered. I'm happy to take any questions and the camera will stop rolling. There is no question too silly, small or insignificant. Nobody told me when I first came into the place that when the speaker was on their feet, you had to sit down. No, I have been walking around. I'd been here a couple of weeks too. I thought I was doing all right. Walked in, I'm standing there, speaker's on his feet. Anyone yelling, speaker's on his feet, speaker's on his feet. What, what, what? Sit down, you idiot. Oh, I can't. <laughs> Nobody had explained to me that when the speaker stood up, you sit down. Everybody says, why are you always telling, why are you always standing up in the chair? Because when I stand up, they have to sit down. Because I was so short. Nine times out of ten, I had to yell out, I 
I'm on my feet because you know when you're standing up there they didn't realize it um, the other the other lovely one I used to love was when you're in a division you can't stand up sort of in the reverse to get the call you have to stand at your spot at your microphone in this chamber if you stand at anybody else's spot you won't get the call why because your mic is switched by the people in the booth behind you and it's switched on it's not switched on by the speaker it's switched on by the wonderful people out the back. They're terrific. Get to know all the people who operate all these wonderful things around the place. Wave again. Yay! So, yep. So the audio guys are up the back. So when the speaker says the member for so-and-so has the call, it's the note for the people out the back to switch on the mic. So if you're not standing at your seat, you won't get your mic on. Can I tell you, people forget this. They've been here for years. They go to someone else's mic. <laughs> Um, you know, there's things like that. In the Federation Chamber, you can stand anywhere. There's not a, a set of seats. Member gets the call, stands up to get the call. But in a division, you're not allowed to stand up. So to get the attention of the chair, the speaker at the time, to give, to make a point of order during a, a division, you have to put a bit of paper on your head. I'm sitting there one day, and the Prime Minister, John Howard's got a bit of paper on his head, and I'm thinking, what's the man doing? He wanted to get the speaker's attention. He actually wanted to cancel the vote. It was quite, there was lots of things going on. It was quite momentous. He wanted to pull, call the vote off. Um, so there's really arcane, wonderful things that go on in here that go on outside. So if there's anything I can clarify now, feel free to ask. I'm going to be around for the next two days and there's going to be a whole lot of people. But if there's something anybody would like to ask, feel free. The other thing, you as members don't need a pass. You've got your nice little green pin. Okay? I'd really recommend members getting a pass. One of the big reasons is if you want to avoid the media at the front of the building, the only way to do it nowadays is via the car park. The car parks are now gated. So if you don't have a pass, you actually can't get in to the car park. It's just Handy thing to have, go down to the pass office, get one. I've got one, um, mainly because I've got a car and I get in and out of the car park. But I went for a walk this morning, I went up Red Hill, I came back, given the flurry I caused in the media in the last day or so, I thought perhaps somebody might want to pounce on me. Um, best way to avoid them, go in the car park. You can ask the com cars to drop you down there as well. That is quite um, doable. If you don't mind, you want to go past the, the wonderful charade that is uh, the, you know, the door stops in the morning, you can do that. Mind you, there's some great footage of me at various times, bright red and in some really bad t-shirts I seriously wish the media didn't have. Um, but, you know, so there's some other reasons to avoid.